into their ranks. Just brutal. I mean, that's, it's like the Devastator Plasma Cannon combo is very difficult to defeat unless you can somehow get behind them and, you know, flank them from behind. But even then, you, it's like considering the forces I have on the field, that's a lot of troops supporting them. Uh, we got the Dreadnought also helping to protect them. It's just not a good scenario for the Tyranid player right now. You know, and he's getting a second Venom Brood, I'm guessing to just try and quickly kill your Dreadnought, but you know, with those support uh, teams, it's just like... Yeah, it won't nah, matter. not really. Well, it won't matter because, sure, they're fighting, but they're fighting at range, and that, that makes them easy pickings for artillery. And because, you know, Tyranids operate in such huge mass hordes, it doesn't help much. Hormigons trying to decap on the left side. They are ripped to pieces by my tax and my apothecary because I know these, that the rest of my forces here can operate independently. So I decided to, you know, have them be like uh, separate forces. They, I mean, the center can hold the field for a while. And his Venom Brood trying to pick up my Dreadnought. Oh no! Plasma Cannon says, no, you're not doing that. Dre uh, Devastator's pinning the whole blob force down and they are just getting arty to hell with Plasma Cannon fire. Uh, scouts also providing some support to the support teams. Uh, one of them has a shotgun, and now the Dreadnought is just taking the Hive Tarion by himself with a plasma cannon, just doing its work, smashing into the Tyranid line, destroying it utterly. And the Hive Tarion tries to stop the support teams, but it's just too much for him. The Dreadnought finishes him off, and now the whole Tyranid swarm is in deep, deep trouble, and they are pulling back. Just, oh, horrendous casualties. Um, and there's the GG as his that last Termagons fall and I destroy his power once again. Uh, that just shows you the value of those weapon support teams. Though it's, I'd say, yeah, it's a dangerous thing in early on, but, you know, I, I, I think nothing beats a blob better than artillery. <laughs> yeah, my god, it's just... One of the things... I find with you know like uh, when I play it's just I can't get the I can't get this stuff uh, you know fast enough. It's like if I concentrate on energy, then the person concentrates on victory points. If I concentrate on victory points, he concentrates on energy and other resources. And it's just like I can't. I really for some reason I just can't get a grip on doing two at a time and getting the stuff fast enough. Yeah, I think just you know. There's only one thing to do for that, and that's practice, but maybe not so much practice against people, because obviously if you go online and face people, maybe you're going to be up against more experienced opponents. I mean, you had you were constantly matched up against experienced opponents. There aren't a lot of noobs out, other noobs out there that are, you know, really bad. Uh, I'm sure, like, because it must be very discouraging for other noobs, just like yourself. Who are just like getting beat up and by all these experienced players? They're just like going ah, and they're not gonna, they're not gonna play. Then they're not gonna get matched up against you know other people of their level. So obviously some other way to practice that. Um, basically, my recommendation is just to either practice in skirmish or do something along those lines until you can get a handle on being able to you know to manage all of that and you know have a, a plan to follow. The thing is, also for me, I don't know if I've really found a commander unit to stick with. I mean, y you've stuck with Apothecary the entire way and found a good strategy that suits him. I've been all over the place with Forest Commander, Apothecary, Tech Marine, and when I keep and I keep switching back and forth from those, and I can't really nail down a, a, a solid strategy for one of them, even though Forest Commander has been, you know, the most successful for me, if you could call it that, since I only have one win. Well, like I said, my suggestion is, once again, you know, that the, that can only come with practicing with that one commander, you know, in the same sort of practice sessions that you know where to go for with that commander, you know how to run with him. It's like that can only come with experience, whether it be just skirmishing against a computer opponent or in a non-serious game, I guess, you, you know, with the way ranked is right now, you're more than likely going to get matched up with a lot of veterans because there are not a lot of noobs out there.
I, oh, I, hell yeah, I mean, I was like, rank 2 and like, 2 skill at 8 or 9, and I was getting matched up against guys who were like, level 60 and like, 2 rank skill anywhere from 20 to 30. It's not fun for, you know, it's really tough for noobs to get in at this point, so uh, that would be probably my recommendation is to just, you know, either practice with me on that or just to just play the game, like skirmish games, just even against the AI to give yourself like a rudimentary strategy and be able to come up with something and also, you know, just be able to manage all that's going on. But, yeah, uh, obviously people are going to say, yeah, it's human opponents are like that are willing to play the game for fun not so much be serious are probably a nice way to practice like in the uh, and I think this it's it's not as frustrating when you're doing it with people you trust because you know it's not they're not gonna get a big head about it or what have you unlike some other people because interestingly enough I got called a hacker the other day I got accused of lag hacking which is the biggest horse crap I've ever heard it was the first time I ever got called on hacks, and that's funny. You didn't even know what a lag hack was. Yeah, I didn't even know what a lag hack was until I asked. <laughs> oh, jeez. But, uh, that uh, the guy was just throwing a hissy thing. <laughs> yeah, he was. Some guy named Zench, or whatever he was, a total heretic spammer. And yeah, he was gonna win the g but what he got really pissed because he was gonna win the game and then he got denied, and uh, and then he drops and I get a technical technical win, and uh, then he sends me messages and bitches to me about it and I'm just like, whatever, man. It's like I didn't hack nothing. Blame games for Windows Live for being shit on you at the worst possible time. There is no other explanation. And the th I'd say the worst thing about these supposed lag hacks, kind of hard to prove. Even, it's like, say it, if I was like a lag hacker, let, let's assume for a minute that he's right. It's like, how can you prove that? I really can't, uh, it's very hard to prove and catch someone like that. Well, uh, like seriously, because of the fact that all the evidence you would have is circumstantial. It's like there's no clear-cut evidence of a of the use of a hack, even with a replay. And there's just too much circumstantial evidence on that. But I'm just... It's like, I didn't... No, I didn't use it. Just putting it out there. It's like, like I said, I didn't even know they were... They existed until that guy pointed it out to me and accused me of it. And it was just like... like I said, I, I, I didn't know what it was. And obviously I didn't need it. Yep. Let's play something. Anyways, this has been another combat journal. We are signing out. Goodbye. Maybe I'll get better at some time. Oh, hopefully. <laughs>